All right, we're back with another second channel special. And today we are reacting to the greatest bank heist in Chinese history. And this was done by Kento Bento. And I quickly just skipped through this. This was actually sent through to me by my editor, Jeffsy. I did just want to give him a shout out. And if you guys would be nice enough to go ahead and check out the original video. And although I'm reacting to it, I think it's important that you guys go and show the original some support as well. So let's get into it. October 10th, 2006. The vault manager of the Agricultural Bank of China was on edge. He was afraid. He felt something wasn't quite right. Yes, there were two security guards patrolling the grounds, which made him feel safer. But as vault manager, he needed to be sure himself. He checked the printer room, the conference room. So wait, what, this guy just, uh, just had a hunch? Was there a reason for this? No sign of trouble. Then he entered the vault. Where everything was also fine. The money was there, the, the cash. security system was down, in fact, everything was just as he planned. He started counting the money, but he knew he had to be quick. The paranoia was starting to get to him. He shoved the cash in his duffel bag. Who's doing the heist? Is it the bank manager? He shoved the cash in his duffel bag and swiftly left the vault. For Ren Xiaofeng, it was good to be the man in charge. It made robbing the Agricultural Bank of China that much easier. Right, got you. He was the Donnie in charge and he's gone and essentially robbed his own bank. I was confused there for a second, but we're good. He cautiously made his way to his car, but then suddenly, flashlights. It was the two security guards. They had spotted him. They glanced down at his duffel bag and asked if he got the money. You see, it was smart to enlist the help of the two security guards as it made him feel safer. He dumped the bag of cash in the car and made no attempt at a getaway. Not yet, because his shift wasn't over. As vault manager, he still had about an hour left on the clock. Okay. The next day, at home, he was relieved. He had the cash. In his possession was 200,000 yuan, which actually wasn't all that much. At the time, this was the equivalent of about 26,000. If you're robbing a bank and you come away with $26,000, you've not done a very good job of robbing a bank. Unless you're coming away with a million dollars, that should be the minimum you are allowed to rob from a bank. Now, however, this wasn't the end of his plan. Okay. Later that day, he made his way down the street to a lottery vendor where he purchased a large quantity of lottery tickets. He did the same across the city, across Handan, with numerous vendors buying in bulk. For this was his plan. He was using the stolen money to buy lottery tickets in the hopes of winning a sufficiently large prize. Well, I think we've found the culprit here. Hold on a second. We've just found the bloke that's doing the whole thing. It's this guy right here. Large enough to be able to return the missing funds before anyone noticed they were missing. The idea was to still have money left over for himself. That was his plan. And if you haven't already figured it out, that is a stupid plan. Why? Because the math simply doesn't add up. Lottery tickets are designed to cost more than the expected gain. Yeah. The chances of winning back more than you put in, and on this sort of scale, is are extremely low. If it were that simple, then everyone would be doing it. Despite the stereotype, this wasn't apparent to Ren. Damn, why they gotta bring the stereotype into that? That's, that's savage. So he was essentially unofficially loaning the money, using that to buy the tickets, and then when he wins it, he was gonna put the money that he'd loaned unofficially from the bank back, and it was like nothing ever happened. TLDR, this guy's a fucking idiot. This is meant to be a great heist. And well, part of the reason that's the case is because despite the unfavorable odds, Ren won. I right, wait, yo, Jeff, so you might have to delete that bit about me calling him an idiot. It actually worked? He was able to return the 200,000 back to the vault and still pocket a large sum himself. Well, it how all much went smoothly, it? swift, and- How's he managed that, the lucky little bastard? Celebrations were abound, as the heist was a genuine success. And so with the banking staff none the wiser, Ren settled back and watched the sunrise. Now, some people would move on but not him. Oh, I got greedy. Never get greedy. In March 2007, emboldened by his initial success, he felt no. it was time for a round two. You got lucky. Surely you have the brains to realize that you genuinely got lucky. The Agricultural Bank of China, after all, was one of the big four banks in China and their vaults were loaded. He wanted more. Oh. So much more, in fact, that he couldn't do it alone. He still had the two security guards in his back pocket, but they were just lookouts. He needed someone in bank who could help move the money and to shield his activity from the rest of the staff, at least till they could return the funds. The missing 200,000 previously had gone unnoticed by the banking staff, 
But this time around, if, say, Ren were to wipe out 50% of all money yeah, in the Yeah, they're gonna notice that. It would be obvious. Now, there was only one person Ren had his eye on, and that was Ma, the other vault manager, as he, of all Your people, mom. was sure to notice the missing funds. And so he had to bring him on board. This was certainly a risk. But fortunately for Ren, Ma was game. All oh, these idiots, man. Do they not realize that this isn't a sustainable strategy? Okay, it was time for the heist, the second heist. This one lasted much longer. During the months of March and April, Ren and Ma secretly carted out over two tons of cash, the equivalent of 33 million yuan, right. or at the time, 4.3 million US dollars. Now we're talking about a bank robber. Like I said, you gotta be coming away with at least a mil. The inconsistencies were adding up, and despite bringing Ma in, some of the staff members were starting to notice. It wasn't long before police were notified. This was looking bad. But as vault managers, Ren and Ma were able to use their sway and come up with temporary excuses which everyone seemed to buy. They insisted this sort of misplacement error happens from time to time, and that it was no big deal. The money was sure to turn up sooner rather than later. Of yeah, course, yeah. this was their attempt at buying time, as they had yet to scratch out all their lottery tickets. And it was a lot of tickets. 33 million won worth of piles and piles that would put Mr. Beast to shame. Over the many weeks, the two bought and scratched out lottery tickets on an unprecedented scale. Now, this time, shockingly, the lottery did what lotteries are supposed yeah, to. And, and they lost it all. Exactly. Surprisingly, police became increasingly suspicious as the inconsistencies persisted. It didn't fix itself as they were promised. In desperation, Ren and Stimpy, I mean, Ren and Ma came up with an ingenious solution, doubling down with heist number three. This is just called a gambling addiction. That's what this is. I mean, it was sure to work this time. It had to. For the third heist, they stole a further 18 million won. Alright, so not as quite as much as the last time. Unlike before, they were now on a serious time crunch, and they didn't have the luxury of spreading out their activity over many weeks. They purchased all their tickets in just one single day, and hurriedly scratched till their fingers bled. I've got a question. Surely, the people that are selling them the lottery tickets, are they like, hold on a second, you've got... Where has all this money come from? If you're wondering how the insane amount of ticket purchases were made without raising suspicion... Well, that's really fucking weird, I'm not gonna lie. As soon as I've pitched that, okay. That's because at the time, while China was transitioning to electronic, cash was still king. Yeah, but still, like, a guy's rocking up with, like, millions of dollars. Out of a total of 51 million won, 6.7 million US dollars, mm -hmm. they were only able to recoup a total of 98,000 won. That's a howl. 12,700 That is an absolute howl. Yep, they were screwed. And they finally knew it. On the plus side, though, the city of Hunan reported record-breaking lottery ticket sales. Must have been some good marketing. On April 16th, the bank finally caught on to the legitimacy of the missing funds. As the vault managers could stall no more. The police immediately set out to arrest the duo for what was soon confirmed to be the largest bank heist in Chinese history, but they had already fled the city. They were, however, able to arrest a different duo, the supporting cast of the two security guards. Surely the poor security guards, man. All they did was turn a little blind eye and said, look, I'm just trying to put food on the table. Ren and Ma were all about saving themselves, having days earlier bought fake IDs before disappearing. This prompted oh, an extensive imagine. nationwide manhunt, with imagine China's public security them. ministry placing the two men on their most wanted list. A bounty was placed on their heads. Ma fled north to the capital Beijing, while Ren made his way down to the Jiangsu province. Their faces were now plastered all over the news. Oh, that would be stress. Beijing wasn't so great. Unsurprisingly, two days later, he was caught and arrested. Then there was one, the mastermind. Ren. Ren, the original, made his way southwest by taxi to the coastal city of Yangyang. He's on a boat. As China's most wanted, traveling 650 kilometers all by taxi was probably not the smartest decision. Taxi driver, why, why are you taking me 650 kilometers? Nah, just fancy a little weekend away with the, all these bags of cash. As he later swapped out the cab for a black Honda, which he made sure to have a sunroof because priorities. After purchasing the car from a dodgy car salesman, he realized he needed to quickly find a place to lay low. Using his fake ID, he rented a high-end apartment near the waterfront from his new landlord, which, along with his sunroof car, was seriously eating away at his reserves. You've gone to lay low and you've got a high-end apartment. I mean, I know he's not the smartest guy, but it's just surely we're going over some basics here. But at least for now, it was time to kick back till things died. 
except it was already over because the police knew exactly where he was. It turned out that looking disheveled and unshaven for days and paying for everything from a bag full of cash was suspicious behavior. News. This guy's a donkey, man. The taxi driver, the landlord, and the dodgy car salesman. Indeed, it seemed the dodgy car salesman had come across someone far dodgier than himself. Since all three assisted with the capture, they ended up splitting the 200,000 won reward. Ren and Ma were charged with embezzlement, and in court, the prosecution pushed for the harshest sentence under the law. Ren in particular repented and tried to offer up advice on how the bank could prevent such theft from happening in the future. But unfortunately, it was all too late. They were given the death penalty. What? And a year later, they were executed. I didn't realize you got the death penalty for like non-violent crime. TLDR, don't rob a Chinese bank unless you mind getting executed. Cheers for watching today's video. I'll catch you guys next time. Laters.